Tere tulemast, vaatama Põff TV-ed. Meie oleme siin Põffi Pop-up Studios Nordic Hotel Foorumis. Põffi linnastub tänavu Ungari film Vaikne vaikus, mis räägib noorest muusikust, kes üritab välja selgitada, kas tema orkestrikaaslasega toimusseksuaalne ahistamine või mitte. Vaatame selle filmi treilerit. Võin põsse, mõned. Vähe kätte alma kõud. Lähed jõpa muus kasta kesed. Eesed. Nuri első osztályba jár, és mostantól az zenekarba is. Köszöntsétek őt szépen. Elhívtam egy kemény barátomat az akadémiáról, hogy nézzem meg téged. Dávid, itt vagy? Nagy baj, nem lehet, csak 2000 ember van a stadionban. Gyere, mint be kell játszanunk. Tudnál nekem segíteni valamiben? Van egy tanár. Mit csinál? Bizalmasabb dolgokat. Ki az? Én ismerem. Megkért, hogy ma este menjek le a szobájába. A zsebébe tettem a telefont. Lehet hallani, hogy hozzáér, hogy csinálgatja. Velünk is ezt csinálta, nem emlékszel? Én tudom, hogy nem én vagyok az egyetlen. Mi nem az egyetlen? Tudom, hogy mással is csinálod. Miféle magánügyed lehet egy 14 éves kislányjal? Édes Isten kívánt, ez csak egy ülelés volt. Mert öleléssel kezdődik. Ja me oleme siin filmi režišööri Zoltan Nagyiga. Hello Zoltan, it's great Hello. to have you here. Nice to be here. Thank so, you for having me here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so the, today is the international premiere of your film uh, on the quiet. Yep. Um, how do you feel right now? Actually I'm pretty excited. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to see the people in the cinema and I hope they, they're going to enjoy uh, the movie and they will have a lot of que questions after that. So the um, story takes place in a music conservatory. Um, have you studied any musical instruments or do you, um, did you go to music school? Actually, my parents are musicians. So therefore, uh, I had to go to a music school when I was, when I was young. I, I played the violin, the viola and the drums. So this musical environment is my childhood. And therefore, uh, I thought my first a uh, feature film should take place in a environment like this. Mm -hmm. uh, where did the inspiration for the story uh, mm -hmm. come from? Actually, when I was young, uh, like 17, I witnessed a similar situation like this. I was a part of a community where a story like this happened. And uh, a lot of, lot of questions uh, came up when I was young and still came up when I'm an adult and uh, I was like I should try to look for answers through this movie and uh, yeah that, that was the inspiration and uh, through the uh, pre-production process like uh, the script writing we made a lot of interviews with uh, victims uh, of these situations and uh, we collected like a hundred Hundred, hundred stories, and uh, out of them we uh, wrote the script. Um, I think your film shows very well how difficult it is to distinguish if um, someone abuses the power and authority they have, or, or whether they don't. So why you decided to make your film about um, topics like this, or why these topics uh, are you important? You mentioned that um, it's based, not based on, but it's inspired, inspired. from more, more life More like events. inspired, yeah. Mm -hmm. So was there um, any other reason why, why you decided to, to make a film about uh, topical mm. 
difficult topics like I, this? I think this is the uh, strongest uh, cause mm -hmm. that I made this movie. Uh, the other one is, I can say that um, according to my experiences and according to the experiences of the last couple of years, um, I saw that uh, when we meet one, when we meet a situation like this, we only deal with the two uh, role or the two uh, person of the story, uh, the victim and the other one. And uh, we never deal with or we never speak about the environment or the community where these stories happen and where these stories can like, you know, uh, flushed under the carpet, sweeped under the car carpet. And uh, therefore I thought it's uh, it's really important to talk about the environment because uh, responsibilities are uh, and important responsibilities are found in the environment too and not only uh, in the victim and the other guy's situation. Uh, is it also important to you that um, uh, your films are about issues that are relevant and widely talk about, uh, talked about? Because this obviously um, people nowadays talk a lot about topics like sexual harassment and so on. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good thing that finally we dare to talk about these things. But the way we talk about these, I don't think these are, but this is the good way. And um, because, because uh, it's always are about, you know, the tiny little details, how it happened, where he, where someone, who, who touched who and else. And, and we never deal with the important part of the topic uh, and I think the most important part of the topic is the responsibilities and every one of us have responsibility in every situation as a father as a teacher as a classmate uh, as, a, as, as, as a as a human yeah so you do think that uh, films can uh, contribute to solving topics like this or not solving but dealing with topics like this? Uh, I don't think a movie can solve anything. It can, uh, it can ask questions and hopefully those questions are, I don't know, uh, make talkings and uh, yeah, just talk about the topic okay. and trying to find any answer to those questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, before this film, you directed uh, several short films, so can you describe how, how different was the making process of this film for you um, compared to your previous films? To be honest, for me it was almost the same, just the short movies were like uh, six days shooting and this was, uh, as far as I remember, 28 days. So it was the same, it was just longer, and, uh, but I had to do the same. <laughs> Okay. Um, now I want to talk a bit about the title of the film because mm -hmm. in English and in Estonian it's a bit different. Oh really? Um, in Estonian the title is Vaikusmi, uh, which liter literally means uh, quiet silence. Mm -hmm. uh, but in English it's um, on the quiet. Yeah. So um, where did the title come from? Um. According to my experiences, um, most of these situations are, you know, um, are keep it on the quiet, mm -hmm. and uh, we 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 don't really talk about it. We don't deal with it. Uh, we just uh, don't talk about it, mm -hmm. and uh, therefore I thought uh, it is the main, um, I don't know, question of the movie that why do we want to keep these stories on the quiet, mm -hmm. and. Uh, maybe we, we shouldn't, maybe we should talk about those and therefore I, I, I think this is the title of the movie. Um, the story is told in an ambi ambivalent way so um, it is possible to interpret what happened uh, in very different ways. Was this your intention from the beginning and why, why you decided yeah, uh, to tell the story in that way? I think we never see the exact details and because these things happen like uh, uh, behind closed doors and uh, I think what we don't see that we consider 
that didn't happen, you know, because I have to see that uh, I have to see something to uh, make sure that that really happened. But we never see these happenings, and therefore, maybe therefore too, um, we just don't want to deal with these because we don't believe in them. Because when I was young, and uh, one of one of my um, classmates came to me. Uh, and shared her secrets to me, and I, I didn't believe to her back then, because I, I I couldn't imagine, and I didn't see anything. Therefore, I didn't believe in her. And uh, I think uh, in a lot of situations, the same thing happens. That uh, not a lot of people believe in that. That believing that's true. Um, well, the music is obviously a very important uh, part of the film. So, how was the um, the making process of the music? The composer is uh, called uh, Peter Zombola, right? Yeah. Uh, so, did you give the composer any instructions, or uh, did you fully trust him, or how, how was the actually? Process actually, of the music? I, I wanted uh, classical music through the whole movie. But there was one piece, an Arbo Pert piece, what, what was so really expensive that we couldn't afford. And uh, therefore I asked P Peter uh, to, uh, to compose uh, something because uh, that piece was uh, played under a really, really important uh, scene. And I explained uh, Peter, to Peter the scene and uh, he composed. I, I think a really great piece uh, to that. Uh, did you know him before? Like, have you worked with him before, or you just approached him? I just approached him. Okay. Yeah. Um, how easy or how hard it was for you to find the right cast in the film? Uh, for example, the young actors that you worked with. Uh, was it important to you that they have a musical background, or did, did they have a musical background? No, they they don't. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they are actors who are trying to imitate the music or playing playing the music, and it was like a half your process why they learned how to imitate uh, playing on the piano or playing on the cello or playing on the bass basses. <coughs> and um, I'm I'm um, I'm teaching uh, in Hungary in the University of uh, Theatre and Movie Arts. National University of Theatre and Movie Arts, and uh, therefore I see a lot of uh, actor exams. How can I say that? You know, uh, and uh, I collected those guys from the university, and uh, I often go to the theatre, uh, and uh, I, I chose all of the actors uh, from theatres. So. We only made the classical uh, casting process uh, to find the young girl, uh, Nori, and uh, it was like uh, one and a half year. And uh, we watched like four, four or five thousand girls, and out of these masses, we j we found uh, Bognar Lulu, and uh, she was uh, she's great. I mean, she's great. Um. <coughs> A quite famous uh, Hungarian actor plays the conductor. Yeah. Uh, how was it to work with him? How, how did you find him? Was it was it your uh, intention to get him to play the part? Um, I'm sorry, you can actually, say the name, so uh, I don't mispronounce it. But Gabor Mati. Yes. Uh, actually, it wasn't really hard because he teaches uh, on the university too, and uh, I approached him. I I just phoned him that uh, I have a movie, that's my first feature film, I'm Zoltan Noy, if you don't know me, uh, please read my script and uh, just call me back if you're interested. And uh, he called me back, uh, we met, and he was like, I like the story and yeah, uh, I'm, gonna t I'm gonna take part in. And it was really great to uh, work with an actor like him. Uh, he just did what I asked, and uh, it was great to see everything happening what you ask. Do you know what your next film is going to be about? Oh my god, uh, I have several, I have a lot of uh, scripts, <laughs> uh, and we'll see uh, which will be founded. 
but do you think you're going to um, continue this path of mm -hmm. uh, making films about controversial topics like this? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have similar uh, projects like this, and I have way, way more, way different projects like this, uh, but then this, and uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Okay. What comes next? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for this interview, and I hope that you have a great time here in Tallinn uh, at the Black Knights Film Festival. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Me rääkisime siin Zoltan Nasiga tema debüüt filmist Vaikne Vaikus, mis esilinastub siin pimedate ööde filmifestivalil. Mina olen Hanna Aunin, aitäh teile vaatamast!